Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast. We're talking about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and y'all know my co host, Justin. Motor vlogging is a love hate job bird. And Uncle Time to Raid Area 51, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, and Nutsack, the last DDC bag you will ever want or need. Today, we are talking about the conspiracy surrounding Harley warranties. And because we are not experts, we're being joined by John Maxwell, the Harley tech. What's going on, guys? What's up? Oh, oh we're doing this? Um, we're doing it again. Yeah, yeah. This is take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> oh, and it's hey, everybody. You know, I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get a fancy middle name. You know, I got I to gotta be honest. Well, you're the Harley tech <laughs> already. <laughs> I mean, we could call you yeah. John, the I got Harley one. tech Maxwell. I got one. John, what you got? Still hasn't gotten a haircut, Maxwell. <laughs> there you go. See, I knew you guys. Or could do it. <laughs> we could do a throwback to the the world record ride and say, John, dirty wet hippie Maxwell. <laughs> dirty that, wet. Because someone lost a dirty wet hippie. That was the first thing I ever said to you in person. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably, that's probably accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, John, thank you for coming on the uh, show. We are admitted admitting that we do not know shit about harley warranties other than what we have dealt with personally and all the crap we have seen online uh tons of misinformation on the interwebs around what will void your harley's warranty things like an exhaust system air cleaner shocks and even grips uh and in <laughs> to ken's case what was it? The, the, the grill inserts. The grill inserts for the, for road, the road, road glide. glide. Yep. Yeah. You can get it at twowheelgrills.com. Two wheel grills? Mm -hmm. That will void your warranty according to <laughs> some dealership. Yes. So we wanted to tackle this uh, issue and maybe, you know, have John shed some light on this. Uh, all the videos on, on the YouTube about this. John's was the best. So we're uh, happy to have you back on the show, John. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. But can we also say that he's he's not an expert? I don't want to put him on the spot in case he says anything wrong. I don't want to get him to get in, in like trouble or anything. Okay, <laughs> yeah. he's so, not a certified from from the factory. He's not type a warranty expert. certified tech. Correct. He's oh. just, he's <laughs> yeah. just more familiar yeah. with it than the average person. In, in a lot of ways, uh, I'll be relaying my own personal experiences, just like you guys. It well, just so go. happens that my personal experiences are inside of a independently owned dealership not the motor company in milwaukee correct right okay so there's this law that governs warranties um it's the magnuson moss warranty act and kind of the long title for it is an act to provide disclosure standards for written consumer product warranties against defect or malfunction to define federal content standards for such warranties to amend the federal trade commission act in order to improve its consumer protection activities and act to provide minimum disclosure standards for written consumer product warranties to define minimum federal content standards for such warranties to amend the federal trade commission act in order to improve its consumer protection activities and for other purposes first off how the fuck did you get through all of that <laughs> well, done. well done first off Fuck you, Congress, for having that as the long name. Holy shit. And this was written, this law was passed in like 1975. Yeah. Wow. So I've read up on the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act before, you know, we talked about doing this episode. And basically it came down to the dealership. Someone would get, someone would change their oil, you know, at their buddy's place or something like yeah. that. And they'd take the car back to the dealership for something. And they'd be like, well, no, you, you didn't have your car serviced here. Yeah. Yeah, they were trying to use whatever they could to Anything. get out of warranty work. Um, so <laughs> the main language of the act, now that all that was just the long title. That was the subtext. <laughs> that was the cliff notes. Well, I have a funny feeling I know how the rest of the freaking document goes. Then. No kidding. <laughs> well, it's like 175 pages, so I just took the main wow. content that, didn't put me to sleep uh, but under a full warranty in the case of a defect malfunction or failure to conform with the written warranty the warrantor can remedy the consumer product within a reasonable time and without charge 
may not impose any limitation on the duration of any implied warranty on the product, may not exclude or limit consequential damages for a breach of any written or implied warranty on the product mm -hmm. unless the exclusion or limitation conspicuously appears on the face of the warranty. Mm -hmm. This is the last <laughs> one. One more. Um, if the product or a component part contains a defect or malfunction, must permit the consumer to elect either a, a refund or a replacement without charge after a reasonable number of repair attempts. God damn. <laughs> Fucking A. This is what happens you let Congress write a law. <laughs> okay. Wow. So why all of this matters? If you don't know what consumer protections are out there, the dealership can lie their ass off and you're coming out of pocket for oh, a, yeah. a very expensive repair and you may not actually have to. Yeah. So Harley Davidson's come with a two-year limited warranty uh, from in, on any new bike you buy. Now, John, help us understand what are some common things that will void a factory warranty? Well, the, the most recent and the, the only true one is an aftermarket tuner. Right now, when we, if you have a 17 and later model that you've put a FP3, PowerVision, Thunder Max, um, et cetera. If you put one of those on and we hook it up to the shop computer, the Harley Davidson Digital Technician 2, when we hook it up, before you've even selected the motorcycle that you want to communicate with, it instantly pops a screen up that says the powertrain warranty is void. Damn. That's, that info is sent to the motor company, that VIN number. But it's important to note that the powertrain warranty is void, not the warranty. So that's kind of the funny thing to me about when a dealership tells a customer that their warranty is void, there isn't anything that just voids the whole bike's warranty. It's all bits and pieces, if mm. that makes sense. So for the powertrain, is that the engine, the transmission, and the primary? Yeah, I actually saw the list, and it's... It is pretty aggravating. It is the um, crankcase. Mm -hmm. It is the cylinders, pistons, cylinder heads, which that part makes sense. But the inner primary case, the primary cover, the drive belt is already kind of iffy to get through um, mm -hmm. warranty. Yeah. You know, you almost have to call and say, this is what we're seeing because mm -hmm. that's a part that can be damaged by misuse. Right. Um, it's not necessarily never going to be covered, but it is a little trickier. You know, you got to be able to say, no, there's not rubber underneath a fender from obvious burnouts and things like that. Um, but, yeah, it, it's anything in the powertrain, any, anything that makes that bike go, go moving. But it's not electrical components. It's not, you know, leaky master cylinders or... Blinker you know, fluid, things like that. Yeah. Yes, muffler bearings are actually still covered too. Crazy. Oh, that's, that's good. So to that point, there's a lot of rumors on the interwebs that with some of these tuners, it will save the stock map and you can just reflash and no one would at the dealership would know you had a Power Commander or FP3 or anything like that on there. Is that accurate? I don't know because I haven't tried it. I would I would actually have to like I mean that's a risky thing to do for yeah. a customer like maybe this will work. <laughs> maybe it won't. I don't know, you know. Um but in theory, yes, if the ECM calibration is what it actually reads mm -hmm. and Harley's ECM calibration looks like a regular part number that they put out. The aftermarket tuners calibration you can just like I can look at it and tell that's not Harley's. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's more digits or it's a lot of letters instead of numbers or what have you. So um, I don't know for sure, but in theory, yes. If if it's the stock calibration, then you're good. Okay, so see, and, that, and I've heard that. Yeah, you know, not only in motorcycles but also in cars. You know, guys flash who, it back to stock before you take. Yeah, it in. flash it back to stock before you take it in. They'll never know the difference. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like currently that's probably true. I think down the line it's going to be a. L- I think it, I think I know for oh God I can't remember what car it was, but I just read an article on it that said that they were. Oh, it was actually GM. It was talking about the new uh, Corvette, the C the C8, that the um, the computer was going to be so advanced that tuners weren't even going to be able to get into it for for years. It's so locked down to not be able to tune it that it was going to take them forever. And then even if they did, it left a, it basically left a fingerprint that no well, matter yeah. how many times they reflashed it, that fingerprint would still be on there. Yeah. Saying that some, somebody has tampered yeah, with this system. Correct. Hmm. Uh, I, I expect that um, for sure. I, it's definitely not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. You know, the manufacturers will get smarter and I mean, they're trying to protect their own name and uh, fines from the EPA and things like that. So it's worth it to them to do that. Yeah, it, it makes sense. So what about an exhaust system? So when I got, when I traded in my bike, I, on the uh, 18 Rogue Glide, I had a Vance and Hines Pro Pipe put on there from at the dealership, bought it through them, whole nine yards. Is that covered under warranty because they did the work? Or is it because the fact that the head pipe back has been changed, the engine or powertrain warranty is dead. I'll be honest with you. This is a fun time to mention that the motor company uh, aren't always the greatest at telling us what it is they want. You know what I mean? <laughs> like we what? have to search no out way. information. There isn't, especially as a technician, sales department, parts department, service manager. They'll get some info and emails from district managers and blah blah. And, um, but I, I honestly don't know where the exhaust changes. Um, where where a line is drawn. So the safest bet, and from what I've heard from my own warranty manager, is any change to the exhaust can void your warranty. The big thing right now is the EPA versus Harley Davidson. So one would think that if you have the CAT, which is in the head pipe for touring models, and an EPA approved muffler, then you should be safe. I, I, I think Harley would have a really hard time arguing that warranty case, but well, especially, you're still going to have to argue it. Especially so, if you had it, you bought it from the dealer and had the dealer install it on a motorcycle you haven't even ridden yet. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a, well, that's a fun thing too. I forgot to mention that. So it is important to note though that dealerships and the motor company are two separate entities. Yes. Dealerships are privately owned and they just carry the barn shield name. Um, they, and that's when it's important for that dealer, I would hope would cover you for on your end as the consumer. Um, it might feel like it's warranty cause you may not pay anything, but the reality is that dealership didn't get to submit a warranty claim and have the motor company pay them back. They may very well say, you know, we installed this stuff. We screwed it up. Or, or we screwed up the warranty side of it for him, we're going to cover whatever powertrain issue arose without even telling Harley-Davidson this happened. Hmm. Which which will um, be the that, proper thing to do. Right. Taking care yeah, of your yeah, consumers. Uh, absolutely. Um, that do, Now, that does mean, though, that when you're, uh, you know, 1,500 miles away from home and you don't know that dealership, that dealership might not care that your home dealership where you bought your bike and you bought that pipe and you financed and you did all you buy all your merchandise and all that stuff there that dealership on the road might not care uh, oh, that a dealership good to know. installed those parts wow well that's when you just tell them that you're a YouTuber and you don't want their name on the interwebs yeah. <laughs> do you know who I am I don't want to pull this card but do you know who I am <laughs> I have an I actual card. I can see my haircut just changing as I say that. Just get that nice Susan swoop going. I've got an actual card. Look. <laughs> I've got a business card. <laughs> i got my logo on my arm, motherfucker. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out. So I have a blurb that's from the actual blurb. Um, warranty card. And it says, tampering with noise control systems prohibited. Federal law prohibits the following acts or the causing thereof, the removal or rendering inoperative by any person other than for purposes of maintenance, repair, or replacement of any device or element of design incorporated into any new vehicle for the purpose of noise control prior to its sale 
or delivery to the ultimate purchaser or while it is in use or to the use of the vehicle after such device or element of design has God. been removed or I mean okay I'm not even gonna finish it but thank yeah, God can you read that with less words this <laughs> yeah <time? laughs> but so I have read through the entire Harley Davidson warranty mm-hmm. when I got my ultra I think it was basically if you touch the bike at all they can void the warranty well see and here, here's the thing though is it's on the dealer or on the warranty holder whoever owned like not the consumer it's on them to prove that you have done something yeah. or that what you did caused that problem. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I read that blurb that you just read, and there's pretty much one of those blurbs for every single system on the bike, yeah. no matter what. <laughs> so, basically, if you touch anything, it voids the warranty. And that's why I tell people, like, when they see me at my build series and stuff, they're like, oh, aren't you worried about warranty? I'm like, no, because literally you change your grips and they could argue that it did do something granted like you said they're going to have to follow that chain and prove it yeah but it could yeah well and and the big thing about that is you know like obviously your motorcycle came with stock harley grips if you put you know arlen ness on there well they're not going to give a shit about your grips anymore because you took their grips off exactly but they're they're so nice but they're not going to (laughs) warranty another manufacturer's product but the concern is by putting another set of grips on there and you have an, an engine a issue. throttle sensor yeah. issue? Actually, I, I just, yeah. I, I know I talked to you, John, about this a, a while ago. I finally, it finally got bad enough to the point where I took it in for that throttle issue. Yeah, and I was I'm so worried. I'm glad you were going to bring this up. Yeah, yeah I was so Keep worried going. that they were yeah. not going to warranty it because, I mean, I've literally changed pretty much everything leading up to that throttle sensor. I mean, grips, bars, you name it. And they, they covered it. So, shout out yeah. Cowboys. I don't know if they were able to submit the warranty. I mean, I think, like you said, I'm any sure good dealer were, will be able to just, you know, take care of the customer without any sort of issues. But my throttle sensor and my headlight that went out at like 3,400 miles, they replaced them completely free of charge, no questions asked. The only thing that was a kind of an issue for me, not an issue for me, but something that was kind of a negative is I wanted the part back, but they said with warranty parts, they don't, they don't let you take any part back. And fun fact, if they request <laughs> if they request a part, the motor company requests a part, and you do not have it to send in, it is a five thousand dollar fine. Wow! Whoa, fuck. <laughs> well, that yeah. explains it. Well, that's yeah. that's the and, motor company's protection against false claims. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, it's also you could <laughs> we could probably build a motorcycle out of the warranty room. Wow. Oh, I imagine. If we had all those parts. You know what I mean? Like, you could... Screaming Eagle parts, guaranteed they're coming back. Then block stuff, like, they're going to request that part back. You could put Screaming Eagle badges and things like that all over a bike and make it something that it's not. And essentially, a dealer could tarnish what the motor company tries to protect and make elite and stuff like that. So, it makes sense. It makes total sense. But yeah. Good God, five grand. And they don't. I mean, they don't like the more you the more you don't ship back, the cheaper it gets. Yeah, it just gets Holy bigger. Shit. Yeah, and like I was I, the only reason I wanted it back was because I'd seen someone on HD forums drill into theirs and take it apart to kind of you know get to the bottom of the problem, and I thought that was really cool because like the design of it is fucking terrible. It's so bad, <laughs> but I wanted never, to. Yeah, I've never seen a different one to know if it could be better or where it could be better, but yeah. Uh, I'll try to. I'll I'll send you one. Oh, okay. I got one oh, cool. well, there you go. Because I yeah. I wanted to kind of like cut one open and show people like why it fails and why it's such a big deal. Because when I typed it into the Google machine to see if anyone else was having the issue, it was extremely easy to find because it was a pretty widespread issue, and oh, they yeah. were they well, were describing yes. exactly what I was. So too. everybody knows what was the issue. It was the, uh, so when I would get on the throttle, when I would put, you know, 20, 25% pressure on the throttle, it wasn't, it wouldn't go like, say for example, if you're talking zero would be, you know, completely off the throttle idle and hundred would be full throttle. It wouldn't go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would go zero, four, 12, 16. Like it was jumping. So something on the inside was sticking. Uh, I originally thought it was the powder coat. 
Turns out that was not the issue. And I thought maybe something on the grip was catching. That was not the issue. I took everything apart, um, made sure everything was loose in the um, the throttle housing because I was actually talking to, to John when I said, is it supposed to have play? And he said, yes, about, you said about a quarter inch, right? Uh, well, just, it's supposed to have some side to side movement. Yeah. Uh, not which, like a measurement. Just yeah, which I didn't know. Too. So mine was tight. So I undid that. That wasn't the issue. And then finally, I just, I took all the grip and everything and I turned the teeth on the throttle sensor. So your, your throttle th- sensor has teeth that your grip locks into. And I turned those teeth and I felt the exact same uh, jumping motion. And I knew it had yes. to be something internal. <laughs> so you eliminated the grip and the switch housing and the bar is causing it. It was obviously the sensor. Correct. And it is pretty common. That's one reason why it's good to find an experienced tech and like know your tech and no, because with what you've done to your bike, it someone could easily say, oh, you messed that up. Yeah, and that's oh, why yeah. I was worried, because once I saw, once I found the article online of how the sensor goes together, my fear was that the inside diameter of the bars were just a little bit off. I mean, if they're off by probably a 16th oh, of an inch, yeah. it's going to be enough to cr- crush down the casing to mm-hmm. inhibit that, how that sensor works on the inside. And that's what I was worried about, but I actually... Uh, I talked to you, and you pretty much helped me walk through the troubleshooting, make sure I wasn't missing anything. And then I also talked to one of the guys at um, when we were up in Arkansas. When mm-hmm. We met up with the honor. When I talked to the the head technician there, and he said the exact same thing. He said it's pretty common, and he asked me pretty much the same questions that John did. And I told him I pretty much went through all the troubleshooting steps, and he's like, yeah, it's going to be completely new throttle sensor. And then I asked him if I was able to, to splice – the, the throttle sensor in it, he said absolutely not because if it's off by even like 0.01 ohms, it pretty much puts the bike into limp mode. And, yeah, <laughs> and that would so, suck. Yeah, it would yeah. be terrible. A thousand miles from home. Yeah. All right, so let's take a break, hear from Nutsack, and when we come back, we'll continue our, dis- our discussion. Wow, on you get through all that legal jargon and you fuck, fuck up discussion? Discussion, yeah. words, words, words. <laughs> I'm better with legalese. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today and we are back i timed that one perfect with the uh oh, everyone oh. Take, <laughs> <laughs> taking a toot off their vapes oh, <laughs> the a toot? Flutes. A toot? that's what's called <laughs> toot on that. Yeah. Leave that it. doesn't make it sound even gayer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it to millennials to come up with some goofy shit. <laughs> but uh, says the millennial. Ken and I are zennials. You You're can the only say whatever you want. You're here. wrong. Generation X. I think I'm. I think I'm an elder millennial. I'm yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> an elder millennial. Yeah, depends, I like that. Depends on which, all these fuckers uh, are. Which years you go by? I'm an 85 birthday. So. Yep. Yeah, I'm 83, I'm Ken's 82. 82, and then yeah. Justin's like 94. 92. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. Uh, so, we're, so you guys have to buy Justin his vape gear? We did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> did not assholes. <laughs> You'll never buy me anything. I don't, I don't know about Georgia, but here in Texas, you have to be, or in oh, San, San Antonio, Antonio. San Antonio. Yeah. or Bear County, you have to be 21. No, just San Antonio. The city. The not, city. Not Bear County. Oh, okay. Because Dallas is actually the same way now. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. 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 So you have to be 21 to purchase any nicotine product. Unless you're military. Unless you're military, then you really? can be 18. Yeah. They, yep. They're exempt. Wow. Eh, fuck it. I say they can drink too. <laughs> Shit. If they're going to put their lives on the line for the country, fucking have right? a drink. <laughs> Hawaii's going to remake the entire state 21 plus. Wow. And they've actually, they're going to make it a year older every year. 
forever. What? So eventually, you know, you, you won't be able to buy. You have to be a hundred years old to buy cigarettes. tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine being that age where you're one year behind and it just keeps jumping up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or if you're, you're only able to buy nicotine like three days For out three of the days. year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back back to warranty. So, John, what are some items that you have seen that were kicked back? For warranty, saying you know, motor, or the most common ones. Yeah, the motor company says no. It was we're not covering this. What what are you seeing as a a unprofessional Harley Davidson technician? Um, man, the warranty managers who handles that stuff. I mean, usually complains about it. We had a tire not too long ago. Definitely, definitely on my bench, and um, they sometimes those rear touring tires they'll they'll have splits on the sides mm-hmm. um <clears throat> you guys yeah. have some miles in your bike so you know i that I had the that. center will like wear flat mm-hmm. and the sides stay kind of round mm-hmm. at that point where it's flat to round they'll split um generally it's from low tire pressure but foreign objects and things like that will cause it and i just straight up missed a nail <laughs> and so we say it's Dunlop's fault. Send the tire in because they requested it, and they sent it back like with a big circle around the nail hole. <laughs> big chalk circle. Like you know, <laughs> we call it low tire pressure, and we're kind of like, yeah. So we just bought a tire. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> but they weren't wrong. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually. the most recent one. Um, honestly, for the most part, though. Um, most of when I talk to to someone in Milwaukee about, I'm trying to get something covered that's really close out of warranty. Um, I had a a radio just died um, about two weeks ago while it was in the shop. It worked when it dropped off, and when he came to pick it up, it didn't turn on. So I called him. The bike was like six months out of warranty. See if they wanted to help out any. And they did not. So the we bought the guy a radio and yeah. So well, you thanks, know, and see in some motor company. Well see in something <laughs> like that, that my argument would be I dropped it off and it worked just fine and now I'm getting it back and it does not work. Yeah. And see and our the way we felt about it is obviously we know that we didn't do anything to it. Um, it just quit working, which is a manufacturer defect or some problem with manufacturing. The owner didn't even have the bike, and we didn't do anything to it. So in our minds, that radio shouldn't have quit working. Granted, Harley stands behind their stuff for two years. In my own opinion, a $2,000 touchscreen radio should probably last longer than two years and six months. Oh, yeah. So I gave, I gave them the option to cover it, and they didn't, so... I'm just going to talk crap about them on the internet, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> hey, that's what the internet's for, I'll show right? Them. Yeah. yeah, that's what the internet's for. I mean, you talk shit and look at you give, know, dogs and cats. Giving the small people yeah. a voice. <laughs> yeah. But, so, uh, for the most part, not really. I mean, we're um, on my own dealership. Um, we generally include Milwaukee in um, things that might be iffy or something like that. You know, it's, it's either cover or it's not. Uh, most of the time, you know, um, the dealers that run around and scream like your your warranty is void. I don't really understand that because um, they they really don't know. They're just a representative of the motor company. Mm-hmm. They're not. Uh, it's not actually their say. Um, they could always call and see. You know. Yeah. See, and and that was my thing. So Caliente. Harley Davidson here in San Antonio, Texas, they can go fuck themselves. I uh, I only go there. <laughs> so, I only go there to have them put air in my tires if I'm on that side of town. Yeah, uh, because I put those mesh inserts in my Road Glide after I bought it, and the vent switches that hold your vents open, one of them went out. So what the fuck? Brand new bike, hadn't had it but a couple months. Took it in, and they're like, nope your warranty is voided we don't have to fix this because you took off the fair the front fairing i'm like yeah i took off the front fairing to put those pieces in i didn't play with the clips 
And he was like, well, I have to go talk to my warranty manager. I was like, you go talk to him. I've got all fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, that's uh, one thing I, I do want to make sure I say at some point in this episode, too, is that I always hear, and I'm guilty of it, too, is the dealer said, what really happened is one douchebag that works at that dealer told you something. Yeah. And he for a second forgot that he doesn't even have a name. He is Caliente Harley Davidson. Oh yeah. And now you don't like Caliente Harley Davidson. Oh no, that's that not, guy is a that's not my only reason. <laughs> I have more examples of other stuff. I mean, we can talk about well, that. No, but you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I know good and well that if there's 30 people that work in my dealership we don't all have the same opinion or the same customer service skills as each other. So, man, I will jump on a guy's ass. Okay, that's not right. I will bitch yeah. somebody. Yeah. Out <laughs> it's okay. This is 20, 2019. Certain things that I'll overhear in the parking lot. I'm like, no, 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 dude. You just told that guy that I suck at my job because you suck at yours. And it really, I don't know, it just really irritates me to, to know that whole dealerships get a bad rap because one person doesn't know how to do their job and that can uh, and that can apply to even on the sales side mm-hmm. i mean you hear so many people say oh i'll never buy a harley because i went into this dealership and got treated bad well i went into yeah. caliente harley davidson with five thousand dollars <laughs> cash yeah and they didn't want to talk to me yeah and i told them i got money i'm ready to buy a bike today and they didn't want anything to do with me they literally ignored me why I don't you fucking have no know. idea. No fucking idea. <laughs> I was like, I've got, I got a five thousand dollar down payment. I'm here to buy a motorcycle. Wow. And nobody wanted to deal with me. Like I didn't even get to any part of yeah. which bike do I exactly want. Fuck it. I went to yeah. Cowboys. I had a very similar experience with Havelina. It was kind of like the the pretty woman uh, experience went and, in, and, and they just kind of judged me by how young I was and oh, I'm, what I'm, I was wearing and stuff. So oh, I thought. They thought you were a pretty woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, I really Either thought way. you were going somewhere else with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, help us with, you know, letting our listeners know what is not covered under warranty at all, period. I, I know it's usually called a wearable item, but can you kind yeah. of go into some detail around that? Um, brakes, brake pads are legitimately never covered. Mm-hmm. Even ESP um, will not cover brake pads. Um, in the event of a fork leak that leaked oil onto the pads, so they were obviously not good anymore, they would not cover them. Wow. Um, I guess it's probably written somewhere that they don't, just straight up don't cover them. Um, clutch plates are generally not covered unless you can find something wrong that caused the plates to like burn up is what is what we call it mm-hmm. but when, when the plates are worn out cuz that's another uh, item that's easy to misuse or abuse yeah um they generally won't cover clutch unless well with the hydraulic clutch things going on um you know, you might have a burnt clutch, and then you find that the slave cylinder is bad, or the clutch mass cylinder is bad. Well, in that case, they'd cover it. Well, yeah, well, something else was wrong. It wasn't correct. you just wore them out. It, exactly. There was a, a chain of events that happened to damage the clutch. Then they'll cover it. As long as it's um, not the primary cause. Though. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you're a terrible writer. Correct. Yeah. Like Tyler. Yes. That does, that's <laughs> I was waiting for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen, though. And and honestly, sometimes, you know, that's where a dealership might step in and be like, hey, we'll cover your clutch for you, you know. Um, and what else is there? What about, um, what about batteries? Batteries are covered for two years, which is unfortunate that more people don't know that because a lot of times people will come in with an aftermarket battery on like a six month old bike and we're like dude where's the old battery and they're like oh we threw it away or left it in advanced auto zone or whatever like damn (laughs) dude what are you thinking i was lucky with my battery i got like almost four years out of my battery yeah now with batteries though there is a um battery tester that we have to hook it up to and it prints out a code uh a warranty code that has to be put into the computer for the warranty form and if the battery doesn't test bad then we cannot warranty it um 
And a battery is another thing too. If you trailer a bike and don't put it in transport mode, it'll be dead when you get to where you're going. Yeah. Uh, if you have security, um, if you don't ride your bike for sometimes three months, the bike's not going to start. Battery's still good; it just needs to be charged. That's always kind of an issue where we'll go pick a bike up from somebody's garage. It tests good, everything is fine, charging system works, and it's like, okay, well. You owe us, you know, half an hour labor or whatever. They're like, no, it's under warranty. It's like, eh, not, not because you don't take care of it. You didn't maintain yeah. your battery, your bike. <laughs> the, battery, yeah. the battery is good. There's no warrantable concern. Um, and we're in a military town where a lot of people are uh, deploying and stuff. So, you know, ideally it works out. You know, we're not total assholes, but we're not just giving away our work and gas to go pick up bikes either. It's a There's a very fine line there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's reasonable. Yeah, you know, Tracy needed a new battery, and it ended up costing me a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff costs you a motorcycle. Yeah, <laughs> sneezing. Yeah, tying your shoes. Five thousand mile service. Yeah, yeah. will change. No okay, fuck y'all. Um, <laughs> so, what about brake rotors? Oh God, uh, yes. I knew you were gonna. I, I knew you were gonna do it. <laughs> You fucking dick. Something tells me you had to buy some brake rotors. No, no. Like, oh, no. No, no this story okay. goes way deeper than that. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, yeah, brake rotors are covered um, not for – there is a minimum thickness that brake rotors can have. Mm-hmm. Um, if they reach minimum thickness, then they're not covered. Um, but there's also a, um, a warped measurement. Um, mm-hmm. If they're – and you use a dial indicator and you see if they're still round, essentially. If they're out of round by eight thousandths or more, then you probably feel some pulsation when you use the brakes. And that is a warrantable concern. It's usually caused by overheating or what have you. Would you like now if you know, riding your brakes too if much? It's, yeah. If it's really great, like thirty or forty thousandths, then something probably contacted the rotor and it's not a warrantable concern. Would like, does, would like, does that make sense? Like, obviously, like your brake rotor can't just be like that far out without, oh, yeah. you know, so, so like if you, you drive it into a curb, you or hit dropping a, it on something, if you or hit whatever. a speed bump and you just like fucking send it, could, could that <laughs> send your rotor out around? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that would cause you might bend a wheel before you bend a rotor yeah. on that scenario. <laughs> So okay. it's more likely that, you know, riding the brakes too much for an extended period of time would warp them more than jumping a speed bump? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. riding that in the mountains or just mm-hmm. being a shitty yeah. rider. Right. Riding possible. off the edge of a curve. Yeah. yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, <laughs> so yeah, I had to get that in there. Um, of course you did. Because I'm a dick. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so what are some tips that, you can provide our listeners when it comes to warranty items uh, things for them to think about talk to their dealers about things like that should i should i self-diagnose my problems before i bring them to you (laughs) should he take the bike halfway apart before dropping it off yeah that's probably not advisable um uh, that's a good point though i see on on the internet a lot people have a a one-year-old bike and they're like hey what could be the cause of this dude who cares <laughs> take it to the dealer make them <laughs> figure it out no like, kidding. Yep. i mean I, I i certainly understand the desire to tinker with things and, and work on your own bike but you buy a brand new motorcycle part of that reason and i would think is for warranty uh, or you should certainly take advantage of it. And part now, of that upcharge is, is for the warranty too you might as well get what you're paying for oh yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly um but you know you can do your own services and if a dealer tries to tell you you can't then screw them find a new dealer um but do keep your records um unfortunately there isn't really a way for you to document mileage and it be for sure where if you take it to a dealer we put in mileage in and mileage out um so we have records at the dealer of what oil we used and what mileage you used it at so it's pretty clear we did an engine oil change or transmission oil change or whatever um but yeah keep your records if you're if you want to do your own work and um 
Could yeah, you do yeah. like so, a could you do a video diary if you were doing that? Like say for example, if you filmed yourself saying, "All right, you know, turn on the odometer. This is the 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 mileage right now. The date is X of January, and then you record yourself putting it in there, and then email it to yourself. The only reason I say that is because when I was in the insurance industry, uh, we would always recommend people that got renter's insurance to do a video walkthrough of their house, yeah. you know, show yeah, their TV, absolutely. show their Xbox, and then email it to you. That way, it's always somewhere. Yeah, or, no matter yeah. what you Plus, lose. You're, you're getting a time date stamp Correct. of when the video was done by emailing For it to sure. yourself. Um, I mean, you certainly, it, it definitely wouldn't hurt anything. I certainly hope you never need that video to yeah. prove to somebody, you know, I, um, the motorcycle world is supposed to be a, a good old boy type environment and it's slowly becoming not so much, um, with big business and dealerships and the motor company. So I hope it don't ever come to, you need to provide video proof that you're doing your services more than just receipts hey I, I buy oil and a filter yeah um well, so i have a as far as the mileage goes i know i don't know if it's just the cowboys uh hog or if it's all of hog you can come in and have hog certify how many miles you've ridden so that you can get your mileage patches yeah that's actually national hog yeah that's national hog so i mean sure. that um that's you not know, a bad idea. That's one way, Our, possibly. That match that up with the dates on the receipt. On your yeah. Bike. Yeah, then you could match that up, yeah, with, with the dates on your receipt. Okay, so we've talked about warranty, and, and actually John brought this up earlier with EPS, or Extended Service Plan. So that's actually my ESP. closing argument. Yeah, ESP. There you go. EPS. Is that what I said? Yeah. EPS. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> ESP. So that's my, actually my closing argument. And, John, we would definitely like for you to join in on this one as well. Do you purchase the extended service plan or not, and why? So, Ken, um, Well, okay. yeah, we'll let you go first, John. Yeah. Okay. In my opinion, uh, if, you, if you're going to ride your bike and you're going to keep it for a long time um, – from what I gather from listening to this podcast, you don't really ride or, or you don't keep a bike for very long. So um, <laughs> I, wouldn't buy, pew, pew, pew. I wouldn't buy it if I were you. He would never um, get out of that ser- that, that service limit. <laughs> <laughs> but realistically, um, you know, and if you're going to ride, if you're going to keep a bike for 50,000 miles and, and it's going to take you seven years to do that, ESP is not very expensive. And... I think my biggest ESP job was probably at 70,000 miles on a 2009 Ultra Classic. That guy got a new remanufactured 103 engine because in 09 it was a 96 inch. He got a new transmission gear set and a whole new primary uh, compensator, clutch basket, and chain. It was like a nine thousand dollar bill. That dude paid fifty dollars. That's fucking dope. Wow. Yeah. I mean, granted, he paid probably twenty two hundred dollars for ESP years prior, but he still came out way ahead. That said, if he had bought the ESP for twenty two hundred dollars or whatever it comes to, and he, you know, never rode it and it sat in his garage, well, he wasted twenty two hundred dollars. So yeah. What do you think, yeah. based off of what you've worked on for the ESP services that have come to you, what do you think the average cost is? Um, I don't know. Not. Would you say it's over that two thousand dollar price range? Um, I think you probably get your money. You, most people are gonna, that you're basically paid in advance for what happened. Yeah. For most people, I don't think you, I mean, we've talked a ton in the shop about like, how do these people stay open? You know, cause it seems like they just lose out. You know what I mean? Um, but well, isn't I, ESP still controlled through Harley Davidson financial services? Um, uh, in the money side of things, I yeah. guess. I don't, yeah, I don't think that, and I could be wrong when I've taken mine in for ESP services, mm-hmm. it's not through Harley. So it's would, a different office we call. And yeah. It's a different group of people we talk to. 
And fortunately, it is tied to Harley in such a way that if ESP did uh, deny something, we can call Harley and say, hey, ESP is saying this. And they'll be like, <laughs> hold on a minute. You know? and <laughs> so they'll make it. when I was working at Harley, that was one of their line items of profit. And it's usually significant. Oh, I'm sure oh, it I'm, is. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And... You know, it might be twenty two hundred dollars at one dealership, but the dealerships can sell it for whatever they can. Great point. They can that get for great. it. That's true. So mm -hmm. I know the dealership up in Dallas that Tracy and I got kicked out of their hog chapter. Mm -hmm. They were selling that thing for thirty nine hundred dollars. Wow. See, I don't think I paid that much for mine. I don't remember what I paid for it, but I don't think I paid. And I said no. I said twenty two hundred dollars, and really, that's a that's an F and I office. Uh, thing that's not definitely not my area of expertise. I have no idea how much that thing costs, and every year is different. And the more years you get, it is cheaper. But that's actually all I know about it. I don't know what the actual dollar amount is. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't keep a motorcycle that long, I tend to not get it. But it is transferable. It is so. Like, Ken, if you bought it for your bike and then next year you traded in and got yourself a new motorcycle, you could transfer the balance of the it remaining time. to your new bike. Um, so that's something else to consider if someone is, if they have enough equity or something in their trade-in and they want to go ahead and get it. Um, now, I do get the tire and wheel package. Yep. I got the tire and wheel package as well. Uh, I mean, that pays for itself. So I really want to hit a nail and get paid to change my tire. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, so I had, I bought the ESP, mm -hmm. and I did use it uh, on several things. Uh, shift linkage, uh, those fucking vent switches. I had a... Your uh, tire got replaced, or no, that was that under was the tire for, wheel. That was for the oh, tire okay. thing. So, I mean, that was, I mean, that paid for itself. Yeah. You know, right there. Did you have something with, like, your brake reservoir or something like that? That was a warranty that, that was oh, okay. covered under the well, recall. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, I think the server, the ESP, if you're going to, like you said, if you're going to keep your bike, it's worth it. And definitely get the tire package as well. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the first time you use that tire package. It pretty much warranty, covers it. It pays for itself. It yeah. Because yeah. I think I got mine for 150 bucks. Is yeah. what I paid for mine and Tracy's. Yeah, I so, mean, I mean, the, it's important. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's important to note too that you financed that in with your deal. It didn't like you have yeah. to come up with oh yeah, right. cash. Yeah, and, and that's what I did. So my tire and wheel broke down. I think I pay like fifteen dollars a month, maybe. Yeah, if that. Oh, you know, I yeah. mean, it's not expensive at all. Yeah, no, and it, yeah, and it, it's definitely it's for the, the tire and wheel package is absolutely one hundred percent worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, the ESP is something that you could you know probably do with or do without depending on like you said how much you ride, so forth and so on. Uh, but I mean, I used I used my ESP probably probably three four times. Mm -hmm. Do you and remember how much it was? Each time it's fifty bucks. No, how much the actual? ESP? Oh, how much I paid for it? Yeah. I don't remember. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm pretty much uh, in the same boat as Roblox. I mean, I don't tr trade bikes as often as he does by any <laughs> means. Uh, but, I mean, I've never had a bike hit 10,000 miles. So, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit better <laughs> than, than Roblox is. <laughs> I'll at least go to the 10K service before I, I sell it or trade it. But um, because of that reason, I pretty much avoid the, the ESP just because I'm never going to be able to take advantage of it. Uh, for the tire and wheels, um, I did not get it for my last two bikes, primarily because I was planning on modifying the wheels and changing the tires, which I'm sure would have had some sort of effect on it. So you can powder coat the wheels and it doesn't void the warranty. What about changing the tires, though? Because I don't want to run the, the Harley tires. Well, the e ESP will cover up to the cost of a factory tire. What about the tire and wheel package, though? Is that the same thing? Yeah, like if you have tire and wheel and you're running, um, I just worked on a Fat Bob, uh, a 18 Fat Bob, that 
he actually is running man i meant to i meant to write this down too because it's good looking tire and it's not that silly aggressive looking like it's gonna wear stupid um yeah, see, that, that's what i want though <laughs> yeah yeah like the, um, shinkos. the shinkos right i love the shinkos <laughs> yeah his i think his were done lops um i don't remember the tread pattern or the model number though mm -hmm. but if he caught a nail or whatever and had tire wheel, then they would cover the cost of the Harley tire um, up to that point. Well, I think everyone in this conversation and all the listeners know that Harley has one of the most expensive tires in the market. Yeah, so right. You're yeah, probably like, okay. I can yeah, do like, that and buy um, both both sets. I could buy the front and rear Shinkos. Yeah, yeah. The stock <laughs> yeah. tires are like two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um. But yeah, that's that's the reason why it's just. I would never be able to take advantage of the ESP. Uh, maybe I'll be able to hit that on the Ultra just because I plan on keeping it a little bit longer and it's going to be my most heavily mileaged bike. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I'll, so, I'll so probably get a good deal somewhere. And <laughs> so you didn't get the ESP for your Ultra? I didn't Ultra. get any extended coverages for, for any anything. of my bikes. Okay. Well, my car I did, but that was a whole different story. Yeah. I'm because that one was actually transferable with the car. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I don't transfer it to another car, but I can transfer it to whoever I sell the car to. That's cool. So you're kind of offering them a warranty on a used car. Correct. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, before we wrap this up, John, did you have anything else that you'd like to uh, add or comment on? Uh, yeah, actually, there is a there is actually an emissions warranty, and it is five years and. 18,000 some odd miles. It's the weirdest number you're ever going to hear. But anything that causes your bike to be out of emissions, so a throttle body or a cracked head pipe or something like that, it is covered under the emissions warranty. And not everybody knows about it. That's but that's never, only on the stock exhaust, correct? That would that would be a stock deal, but you know, the, I think I had a four-year-old bike. I covered a – dude, a throttle body is like $800 on some yeah. year model. So it is worth it to know that that exists because not even all dealers know that that exists. And, I mean, it's a whole different uh, side of paperwork and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, it can, it can save you. Um, that's about it. Where you live, do I they think. test bikes for emissions? As a matter of fact, in my warranty video, I mentioned California testing for emissions. So I figured if any state did, then that would yeah. be the state that does. And, um, yeah, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that because I had a lot of comments about how they do not. <laughs> um, apparently. Yeah, I thought most, bikes didn't fall under that. Yeah, most states uh, test car. Uh, most states that test emissions, which apparently the area of Atlanta does, but um, Georgia does not. So. I didn't even know Atlanta did. Yeah, but Texas used they to test, test emissions. cars. They don't test bikes, and then California tests cars and not bikes, and so on and so on. So I don't know of an area that tests bikes for emissions. Um, some of the worldwide viewers, though, they we're complaining about some things that really don't matter over here compared to some <laughs> other things, for sure. But the warranty items on international motorcycles is different. Than what's on the U.S. motorcycles. I found it, that it out. would be. Yeah. I found is. that out with my soft tail. I had a issue with it when I brought it back to the states, and when they ran the VIN because it wasn't a one HD VIN, it was a five HD VIN. They said, "Oh, this is covered under the international two year warranty." I was like, "All right, so, well, sweet. <laughs> call call your <laughs> London <laughs> provider and yeah, set up transportation." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, John, I do appreciate you coming on the show and helping us out and helping our listeners, you know, clear up some of the misinformation that's out there on the interwebs. Um, and always, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. John, before time. you go, do you have anything set in stone yet for your uh, bring it home ride? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I definitely wanted to talk about that. Um, no, I don't. Oh, okay. okay. Well, awesome. All right. Well, no, thanks, thanks for listening. <laughs> I, I will be there October 5th. Um, we're riding out. Um, we're leaving Georgia Thursday, and 
I'm hoping to make two or three dealership stops along the way, probably Mississippi, Louisiana, and maybe Texarkana because it's really close and no matter where you're coming from, hopefully um, we can get a big group riding in from there Yeah. Um, and headed into Paris, Texas. So you're going to try and get some tag-alongs on, on the way? Yeah, I'm thinking so. I'm not really sure how to do it because um, when I mentioned that, I thought, you know, like a couple people might want to join. No. But no, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, there is a safety, a matter of safety and what's realistic in a group ride. So no. I'm no. not really sure how that part's going to work we're out. We're just fucking going but... balls to the wall. <laughs> yeah. Like, you saw how many uh, stops we're making, so. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, and that's the thing is um, – I don't want to make the ride so rigid that that it's you know just crazy to keep up with and it makes my brain hurt. But I do want to include different areas, and if people want to come, they can, or at least like say hello and cheer us on for breaking the world record. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, that's awesome. Yeah, more, I, sounds good. I look forward to uh, shooting some craps with you at the casino. Heck yeah, and all all of y'all are coming this time, right? Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. as far as now, everyone says they're coming. I right? already have my hotel room Everyone booked. can bitch out the day before, like Look, last time. So. And I've got my hotel booked. Uh, <laughs> we team, had it booked last time. Team Bradley <laughs> and Hasso, they're booked as well. Yeah, it should be it should be the full crew plus cool. a lot of bird brains coming up from the, the, the Texas Roundup. I mean, okay, so what y'all are saying is I should probably book a hotel room. I should probably start planning this. I, I mean, really if you don't have a hotel room yet, you're pretty yeah. fucked. <laughs> yeah, I I am a really bad adult. If you guys didn't know, oh I mean, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if worse comes to worse, I mean, you could sleep on the floor in my hotel room. Ooh, because I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. I'm your biggest fan. I've seen this video. <laughs> Like I said, I've seen all the motorcycle ones. Yeah. Hey, it, it'd be a John hey. Maxwell sandwich between you and your yeah. wife. Yeah. yeah. I'll, bring, I'll bring the couch, Ken. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk then be someone better. Peace. Uh, uh, uh.